Morjens from Tampere, the capital of Finland. I'm Tony and I come from Vincit. And we do stuff with closure. And I'm going to tell you how we should do data science, which is the agile way. So I think most of you do some kind of agile, or at least what your management thinks is agile. So the idea is that you have the requirements, you build the product, you show it to someone or collect some feedback, and then you refine the requirements. That's the idea. You go through this cycle and you try to keep the cycle time short. Yeah? Okay, so in lean startup world, there's a different kind of cycle, which is basically the same thing, but different balloons. So you have a grand idea, but now, now it's not just requirements, it's higher level. You're actually trying to figure out, am I going to build a space rocket? Or am I going to build a vacuum cleaner? So you have the idea has to be formulated. So you build something, and if you're running a software startup, then you build code which I, was what, what I did when I had a startup a few years ago. Then you collect some data and use that data to learn something from it. Okay, so the same process. And now we have the balloon with the data, but let's put that front and center, and we have agile data science. So my definition here is that you somehow process a pile of data, you get results, and then you kind of explore or present those results to someone who gets an insight about them, and then you acquire more data, right? That's the beautiful idea. Now, it's not just about you as a data scientist. It should be like in Lean Startup that you are not the guy who tries to only gain the insight and create a nice pie diagram for the board meeting, but you're actually giving that data to a domain expert who wants to play around with it, learn what they can find out from the data and how they could use it. So that's why I, I'm talking about building your own tools quickly in an agile way that someone can actually play with the data. So I would say that you don't, in practice, want to go through the cycle over and over, like design these experiments and run an experiment, get the results, and then set up a new experiment. Because that's going to take too long. That's ex exploring the data, but I, I think you should be able to e experiment very quickly. Like the experience you get with Clojure, when you're first trying it out, you have the REPL, you try something out, you get the answer quickly. So that's, that's what you should do. You should go. Also counterclockwise, that's the big thing about my talk. So thanks. No, <laughs> there's more. So this is the reality at the moment. When you work as a consultant, you get a pile of data, and your client says that, can you get something out of it? And we want to make money out of, the, out of that. That's the reality, but we should aim for the agile world. Okay, so I have a few examples about how, how I we have tried this in practice. One was that our company, Vincent, wanted to uh, had to split people in the different units, smaller ones, so that those people would be co-located. So it was, it was also about the physical space, that who was going to sit with whom in the, in the building. All right. So what I did was I took the evening before the meeting, when we were supposed to discuss this, and I wrote a Closure script app that basically lets you manipulate the people in a nice way. <laughs> so the people here are the, in the graph are the nodes, and then the lines that connect them are mean that they have been working in the same project. So with this, we were able to play around and actually select those people who connect kind of some of the natural clusters together. And after we select who, who will be kind of those connecting people, we just run the algorithm and we, we are able to see that, hey, there's three clusters like we wanted, wow. Uh, but in practice, what happened was that the algorithm wasn't perfect at the uh, meeting, so I actually had to make modifications during the meeting. But since I have written the whole tool myself, 
out of small components, it was functional and so on, I could make small uh, changes to that and actually get a little bit different data to use. Uh, I first tried connecting people through projects, so there was an another type of node, but that was a bad idea. Just representing people who have connections was the natural way to do. Okay, second example is about real-world uh, data gathering. So the idea is that there are food researchers who want to find out experiences that people have about food. And they can't go out and interview everyone one by one. And if you hand them a mobile phone and say that you have to type in how you felt about your lunch today, it's going to be tedious. So this is a simple example of this spoken version. Okay, there should have been audio, but it was in the morning. Uh, the, the, when I tasted my coffee, I said something like, oh, it's an excellent coffee, and blah, blah, blah. And then this is sent to our back end on Google Cloud. Uh, the speech is translated to text automatically, and then you can do nice stuff with it, like search for certain keyboards. You can this how automate the kind of transcription that these researchers normally do. But now they are able to play around with the data and the tools that we gave them, and they, of course, give us, us lots of feedback, like, uh, this is useless, can we put filters there so that we can see what, what the question was, can we actually hear the original audio, and can we select one of those transcripts and find out if there are similar transcripts, and then take this even further automatically, like cluster different answers together automatically, label them, and maybe do some semantic analysis, what was positive, what's, what was negative about the food, and so on. Uh, so basically, I'm able to get some easy, easy pickings there when they give the feedback. It's easy to add like a highlight, which words match to your query. That's easy, I can just go back, like in this diagram, counterclockwise a little bit. But then also I have to think about, I need, now need to acquire more data about the actual study and the question that was asked and so on. And then process that. So why are we using Clojure for, th for this? And why I think it's a good fit for agile data science. First of all, Clojure is data first. You have the data at your hands, you can manipulate it, at runtime, you can do stuff with it without fearing that something might break with the data, or so on. And it's dynamic, and I'm not just talking about the type system, which is part of it, but you actually uh, can do st uh, st stuff that at runtime, like uh, you have those basic data structures that you can manipulate with certain things, and you don't have to care about things that you don't want to care about. You just do stuff with data like you always do. Actually, I think most of you are doing stuff with data already. There, there is no like magic in data science compared to normal data manipulation, other than maybe a higher price for the customer. Maybe I shouldn't have said that, but that's the truth. <laughs> and it's also ubiquitous, so actually you can write closure and use, reuse the same functions like in closure script, I could implement an algorithm that's easy to then reuse in a cloud service or something like that. You can run it front-end, back-end, serverless, cloud, whatever, embedded, mobile, and so on, which is nice. So my conclusion is that since Clojure loves data, that's why I love Clojure. Thanks. <laughs>